In this episode of Balmuth in Focus, we look at a local landmark celebrating a major milestone, stop by the Woods Hole Film Festival to talk with the filmmakers, and we visit with the winners of the 50th running of the A6 Balmuth Road Race. All this and much more on this edition of Balmuth in Focus. Hello and welcome to Falmouth in Focus, FCTV's current affairs program. I'm your host, Michael Kasparian. On a summer much like this one, a mere 150 years ago, Falmouth received a new arrival that changed the population, the institutions, the economy, and even the very architecture of our homes. That new arrival? The railroad. Historical Commission Chair Ed Haddad tells the story. As you may know, this is the 150th year, or anniversary year, of the railroad coming to Falmouth. In the late 1860s, the old, old Colony Railroad got the extension to bring the railroad down from Bourne into Falmouth. Unfortunately, because of the Civil War, uh, the project was delayed. The project was finally completed in 1872 when the railroad officially uh, connected uh, Falmouth to the rest of New England. Now, the railroad extended down from Bourne, and it had three stops along the way coming into Falmouth. There was a station in North Falmouth, West Falmouth. Behind me, you can see Falmouth Station for, at the village. And then the railroad extended down into Woods Hole. And currently, where the Steamship Authority Terminal is would have been the terminal for Woods Hole. Now, at that time, Falmouth was pretty much an agricultural community which was a little bit on the decline. We had a little maritime activity, certainly fishing, some shipbuilding type thing of, of a small nature, but those were waning. Our whole economy changed. We went from being a sleepy commun seaside community with agriculture to becoming a major tourist destination. The hotels, the new hotels that were opening up, the inns, the restaurants, and it really created a boom here. In some parts of, of the area, like West Falmouth, Quisset, Woods Hole, you can see some of the very large homes that were built by the very wealthy from Boston who made um, Falmouth their summer resort. Falmouth Coal, uh, Lawrence Greenhouses, uh, Granary, Woods Lumber, all those businesses suddenly sprout up because these were the freight yards and they would be able to bring their freight in and out uh, very conveniently now because we had the railroads. We had a thousand people here at its peak coming here in the day. In 1884, there was actually a very famous train called the Flying Dude. The Flying Dude was a subscription train. People from Boston would pay $100 a season to ride the train whenever they wanted to. And they, it was so regular to come here that they, so they would buy a subscription and just come back and forth on the Flying Dude to enjoy the beaches or stay at the hotels or maybe their summer house uh, in Falmouth. Who was also coming to Falmouth at that time as a result of the train, biologists were coming here to go into Woods Hole. And as a result, as you know today, MBL, Huey, and uh, are a major, major f force uh, in the oceanographic uh, industry and explorations in Woods Hole. And I would, I would uh, attribute it really to the change in the railroad, bringing those people to Falmouth and making it open to their, uh, to their vision. When the railroad came into Falmouth in 1872, it created a magnificent boom in the, in the town. It changed everything. Thanks to Ed Haddad, Chair of the Historical Commission, and Paul Dreyer of the Planning Board for their generous contributions to that segment. Once the anniversary celebration is determined, FCTV will be sure to let our viewers know. The latest reports show that COVID-19 case counts have increased very slightly over the last few weeks in the town of Falmouth, with the COVID-19 community level in Barnstable County also remaining in the yellow or medium category 
compared to previous weeks. There are plenty of vaccine and testing capabilities available. The Friday briefings by Falmouth's health agent, Scott McGann, are a good way to stay informed on the latest local, state, and federal guidance. You can view the briefings on FCTV Government Channel 15, our Facebook page, and FCTV.org. It's time now for three things from Town Hall, FCTV's condensed version of the takeaways from recent municipal meetings. Selections are chosen based on community impact. The Select Board met this past Monday evening and entered into executive session to further discuss the strategy with Town Manager Julian Suso. The Board voted to rescind all documentation regarding Mr. Suso's 2022 performance review and to rescind the votes to terminate Mr. Suso. The Board then voted to accept the mutually accepted separation agreement which resulted in Mr. Suso's resignation effective August 26, 2022. I motion to vote to rescind all documents relating to Julian Suso's 2022 performance review. A second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Brown, aye. Patterson, aye. Scott Price, aye. Zielinski, aye. Taylor, aye. Madam Chair, I motion to vote to rescind the May 12, 2022 resolution to terminate Julian Suso and the June 27, 2022 vote to terminate Julian Suso and to accept Julian Suso's resignation from employment as town manager effective on August 26, 2022, as provided in paragraph one of the mutual separation agreement. The Commission on Substance Abuse gave a brief report to the board at this meeting, citing one hurdle being a lack of commission members. The report went on detailing community partners the Commission works closely with and grants they received through these relationships. Um, together We Can, uh, the Duffy Health Clinic, um, the Massachusetts Healing Community Study, uh, which recently ended, but we um, were very connected with them. We work very closely with the police department. Falmouth Finance Director Jennifer Mullins then updated the board on the fiscal year 2024 operating budget policy, financial policy update, and the capital plan moving forward. Some of the major capital projects presented were maintenance on Chappaquoit Road, the Hatchville Fire Station apparatus, and upgrades to the town's water system. So the major initiatives um, for the new Hatchville Fire Station, you have fire apparatus, a new fire engine, and an ambulance we have incorporated in there. Um, we will be using the monies. Um, the recommendation is to take it from the Capital Stabilization Fund to um, buy that apparatus. Um, we're going to work on the West Falmouth boat ramp. That was a um, capital <clears throat> initiative from the MES department. We're going to replace the library windows. That has been discussed now for years. We're actually looking at a design, picking an architect, and we will um, look at replacing those next year. The road maintenance budget has gone up significantly. We're recommending um, 1.6 million. Um, costs have gone up, but also we want to do a little bit more as well. To see the meetings in their entirety, check out Government Channel 15's program schedule at fctv.org. After a short break, we'll visit a local park and see how the efforts of local volunteers there are making a difference. Stay with us. Hello, I'm Michael Kasparian, President of the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Betsy West. Not only am I a director for the Falmouth Chamber, but I'm also a longtime member. The Falmouth Chamber of Commerce prides itself as being the community connection. Our goal is to enable collaboration between businesses, government, nonprofit organizations, our schools, public safety, health care, and the scientific institutions for the benefit of the entire Falmouth community. What's good for the community is good for business, and that's why we are committed to connecting people for the purpose of preserving all that is good in Falmouth, while exploring creative solutions for our combined challenges. When you join the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce, you become more deeply connected to the entire Falmouth community. That makes good sense for you, our town, and our citizens. Give us a call, or better still, stop by anytime so we can show you the many benefits of membership. The Falmouth Chamber of Commerce, your community connection. Welcome back to Falmouth in Focus. T-Ticket Park recently saw the addition of a butterfly and pollinator garden this past spring. We stopped by with the 300 Committee Executive Director, Jessica Rittenauer, to check on the progress of the garden 
and why it's such a great place for a walk. Hi, I'm Jessica Rittenauer. I'm the executive director of the 300 Committee Land Trust, and we are at Tea Ticket Park today, which is located at 205 Tea Ticket Highway, a natural park that the 300 Committee um, worked to purchase in 2010 and has been working over many years to restore um, meadow areas, freshwater wetland, pollinator meadows, walking paths. It's just, it's a wonderful place to walk and explore and to get a bit of nature uh, right near the heart of Falmouth. All right, so the area where we are, Tea Ticket Park, was Joe's driving range for several decades. And the Vieira family uh, approached the 300 committee um, with the hope that this land um, could be converted um, to open space when the family was ready to sell the driving range. So the 300 committee worked with the town of Falmouth and received some community preservation funds and state land, uh, park grant funding in order to buy this land so that we could create a community park in Tea Ticket. So it's been a conversion from miniature golf and driving range to the park you see today. So what that meant was planting a streetscape of trees. We have 68 trees that we planted right up along Tea Ticket Highway. Um, Stephen Stimson Associates designed the park plan, working with the 300 committee and the community. We have a wonderful restored meadow area here, and what's behind me is our freshwater wetland, uh, which was restored. Uh, so years ago, this is where you know folks were hitting golf balls when they were at the driving range. They were hitting their golf balls back in here. So we are still finding. Uh, golf balls from from back in those days. It's a really special area um, because of the freshwater wetland. The birds that are coming through here are magnificent. Um, we've actually just completed installation or planting of a pollinator meadow that the local Girl Scout troop helped us with a couple different plantings and we have some signs that have just gone in there to help with education of what is a pollinator meadow? What makes pollinators special and why are they important? This park is almost 11 acres. It's like 10.7 acres to be exact. And, and we have a combination of, you know, the streetscape, the meadow, the wetland. I think my favorite part of the park is being back here by this uh, wetland area. You're far enough away from Tea Ticket Highway, you're not hearing, you know, the road noise, but it's like you can be back here and the experience is you're just surrounded by nature. You've got birds flying overhead and I think it's quite lovely to see people walking through here, walking through with our dogs. There's a lot of, you know, folks that come here to do that, um, but it's just a peaceful spot back here by the wetlands. So I always find it a few minutes at least, you know, to just, you know, to sit here and to observe and take it all in. Part of our mission is preserving land for people. We are connecting people to nature in Falmouth. So there are significant uh, wellness benefits for, for people to be able to have time and space and nature uh, for the walking paths, for the observation, the seating areas, passive recreation. Uh, but between the environmental, water quality, wildlife and human health benefits, it can make a significant difference in a community like Falmouth where our goal is to preserve 30% of Falmouth's land area as open space. So on a visit to Tea Ticket Park, there are a few things that I would say are a must. First of all, uh, we have a wonderful art installation um, that was done through a collaboration of Jane Baker um, and the elementary school students. It's a bird mural that's on the side of our maintenance building and it's just, it's a wonderful, whimsical little art piece that it's just, it's a pleasure, I think, to look and to see, you know, what they were able to accomplish together and that was, you know, through the leadership of Jane Baker and her creativity. Also, our pollinator area with new signage that was just put in. It's just, it's a really special and it's going to change. That is a living part of the park, you know, that's going to change seasonally, but it's a very special area to walk through and an educational opportunity uh, to learn more about pollinators. It's hard to believe that just a few short years ago, Tea Ticket Park was a driving range. It's just one example of the great work that the 300 committee does in our town. Thanks to Lee Jackson for that piece. The Woods Hole Film Festival was held earlier this month with dozens of supporters flocking to catch the latest films and meet the filmmakers. We spoke with a couple of the filmmakers about this year's event. 
Um, we are currently at the Woods Hole Film Festival in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. This is our first year at the Woods Hole Film Festival. I used to actually come to Woods Hole specifically as a child, and I attended the Children's School of Science, which is a formative part of my childhood. We're having a really great time as our first time here at the Woods Hole. We have taken to referring to Woods Hole Film Festival as summer camp for adults. It's really about building relationships and introducing everyone to each other. There is an industry presence here, but I think it's really unique out of the festivals that we've been to. We focus on building connections and having a good time. Our short film, The Body is a House in Familiar Room, is a short documentary that tells the story of a friend of mine, Lauren's partner, who has a chronic illness called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and we portray his story in a magical realism style by combining live-action documentary film footage with paintings. For more information about the festival, visit their website at woodsholefilmfestival.org. Thanks to Max Sykes for that coverage. This year was the 50th running of the ASICS Falmouth Road Race, and FCTV was there to capture all the action. We met with this year's winners and got their reactions and reflections on the race. Kira D'Amato, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands up. Kira D'Amato, you are the 50th anniversary ASICS Falmouth Road Race champion. The area is beautiful. This, like, it's so cool here on like the beach town. Yeah. The course is amazing. It's so fun because you're through hills and trees and then by the beach and then it just is really like it's stimulating. And then the energy on the course because everyone's out there cheering and it was uh, it was really cool. This was a really fun yeah. experience and uh, especially at the end I was just like oh man I don't want to run anymore but then everyone was cheering so loud and going so crazy that you just like feel that energy so. But I just wanted to go out and race today like I'm um, just you know and I knew it being so hot it would probably be a little bit more relaxed of a pace so I think we all just try to settle in and stay like as like conservative as possible. And then I really love water stops. So when I see a water stop, I get real excited and I, I kind of like surge through it. So at three and a half miles in where that water stop was, I kind of surged through and then I realized like I'm in the lead. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna roll with this and just go. So it's kind of a weird spot for a move, but I was thinking, well, maybe that's a good thing. That's a weird spot. So kind of just went with it. And um, uh, I think Edna, I guess, went with me. And I knew that because she, like, she's like a home crowd hero, so everyone was cheering for Edna, so I could kind of hear that, oh, Ed is with me. And that's terrifying, having Edna <laughs> right behind you. So uh, that kept me motivated to keep the pedal to the metal. Oh, I thought she was going to pass me at any time. It's Edna. Like, are you kidding me? Like, last night we were looking up her bio, and we were like, what marathons has she won? And the answer is all of them. So, <laughs> so we were. So like, whenever I race her, I know like she is not someone you can like. I mean, you need to take her real seriously. So in a way, it kept me really honest and kept me really wanting to push it. And then I tried to surge through all the water stops and around turns and um, just to really like try to like you know stick it to her a little bit. But um, yeah, it's terrifying to be in front of her. But I think it brings out the best in me, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I was worried about two things. It was, I mean, this was, this was a big mental game today because worry number one was David was getting further yeah. and he was already far. So it's like at some point we got to get him. And worry number two is a bunch of guys just came right behind me and forced me to the front. Yeah. So it, it really challenged me because I had to balance, like, okay, I can't press too much yeah. because I got to save something for the last mile. But... We also can't let him get much further. So it was really just came down to, to trust that in the last two miles, I was going to have enough to break the guys behind me, catch David, and have a little bit home. And all of those things were really, really hard. So yeah, I was, I was proud to, to pull it off, honestly. When I got the momentum to drop, you know, Bia and Lenny, like a lot of big contenders, that was the moment where I was like, okay, I have this because like it takes a, a real toll to run the way that David was running today that far out front. And in my mind, I was like, he's got to have nothing left when I get him. Yeah. Find out that wasn't true. I catch up to him, and I was like, I'm just going to use momentum and go right by him. And he just latched 
right onto me. Yeah, I saw you guys kind of bumped a little bit there. Yeah, and I was like, oh man, this is gonna get harder. <laughs> so it was like, it was a moment where I thought I had in the bag, and then I, then I, you know, I, I was humbled real quick to know like this thing's not over yet. And uh, we hit six neck and neck, and I tried to just. If I could drop him by the hill, I knew I was going to be good to go. But if I also was like, it's not the worst thing if we go in the last half mile together because that's that's where I've won the race the last two times I've been here. So um, fortunately, I was able to get him early, and I got to the top of the hill. And right when I thought that again, I turned around, and Bia was closing like a train. <laughs> so it was like there was never a moment where I was like, I have this in the bag. Um, really, until I got halfway down the hill and. The, mo the legs were going fast enough. There was a little girl that had a sign that said, like, slap this, this is your power up. And I just like smacked it as hard as I could and just took off and they all cheered. And uh, the energy was, was awesome. So um, to come across the finish line with everyone cheering, is, it was a dream come true, really. Defending his title, Ben Flanagan. He is flying, isn't he? <laughs> Welcome to the finish line, you earned it. Celebrating a little bit, as he should, as he crosses the finish line here. Thanks to Ryan Weber for that report. After a short break, we'll look at more from the 50th running of the Falmouth Road Race and the surrounding events. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Stacy Pugh, President and CEO of the YMCA Cape Cod. Did you know the YMCA is working to bring a Y facility to the Upper Cape? With land secured on Brick Kiln Road next to Falmouth High School, we're continuing the work of bringing this transformative community hub to life. Our design includes a preschool play space, school age indoor playground, and intergenerational teen spaces to support youth development. We will offer programs for all ages through a state-of-the-art wellness center. Our pools will be open for swim lessons, lap swimming, and aqua fitness classes to support healthy living. By providing financial assistance to our families from all backgrounds, our social responsibility ensures everyone will benefit from the Y. To learn more about this project and sign up for our newsletter, visit ymcacapecod.org slash Upper Cape. Welcome back to Falmouth in Focus. Every year, the Falmouth Road Race brings out thousands of runners to participate in the race and many of them choose to run for charities as part of the Numbers for Nonprofits program. We spoke with some of these runners before the race. We're running for uh, BAMSI, which is an organization in Brockton that provides services for a whole array of human services for people. Um, our organization has been around for about 50 years, uh, providing services of people with developmental disabilities and people with serious and persistent mental health. We provide uh, service for about 50,000 people and part of our, our operation has to be around fundraising. So we're doing that today with a big message to people in the community to say come and get involved in BAMSI. Um, I have done fundraising for Best Buddies for many years on my bike and this is my first year running it. Uh, my father-in-law ran every Falmouth Road Race except two, and when he passed, I decided I'm not going to bike this year, I'm going to run. And I have worked for Best Buddy with students with um, disabilities. Um, I'm a physical therapist. I'm a mom of a daughter that passed away with Down syndrome. So Best Buddies is all about inclusion. Like, find a buddy that, that you go to school with, find a buddy that you can work with in the workplace. So it is my passion. So I'm honored to get to run today. I just love this area. I've come here for years and years. I have family in the area and it's just a, such a vibrant, um, amazing area. And, and the history of this race for runners is significant as well. Oh, this is just spectacular. I mean, this is, I mean, the first year was less than 100 runners. I think there was 92 and this, I just can't believe the, how this community rallies around this. It's such a wonderful event. Everybody just, Everybody, it just gives everybody something in common and, and everybody's supportive of each other and it's really, really great to see. Are you running? Well, it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful um, view and I'm very much looking forward to, well, the finish line, but also the beach because uh, I, it's really it's one of the best. Yeah, it's a beautiful race and um, the people here are great and so I'm hoping that will be the inspiration I need. <laughs> 
I love this race. Every year it gets better and better. The people along the route reminds me of the Boston Marathon. Uh, and so the energy that carries us through the entire seven miles, nothing like it. It's outstanding. Um, it's very exciting. I've ran the Boston Marathon, so it kind of reminds me of a mini Boston Marathon with all the people and all the excitement. Um, other races I have done definitely don't compare to this at all. This is, this is fun. Since 2000, the Falmouth Road Race has helped to raise over $50 million for great causes. Thanks to Max Sykes for that package. Kids of all ages turned out this year for the 20th annual SBLI Family Fun Run held at Falmouth High School. Held the day before the Falmouth Road Race, kids raced in varying distances on the track depending on their age. Here's more from the festivities of the day. We at SBLI are so thrilled to be here. This is our 20th year supporting the Falmouth Kids Race. Um, just such a pleasure, beautiful day, and really thrilled to see all these kids out here and getting healthy and running as fast as they can. We're thrilled to be here. Uh, th this is pretty cool seeing all the stuff we're seeing right now from the first one that I did 21 years ago um, at the Hush Candy Community Center. Uh, this is just so much bigger and a lot more activities and a lot more kids. Uh, it's just going to be a blast just to see everybody run and have a good time. And uh, that's why we're here, for everybody to have fun. First of all, I, I mean, uh, I'm looking around, I see a lot of fast kids out there, so uh, I'm thankful that they're not on the start line tomorrow, otherwise I'd be pretty nervous. So uh, to all the kids running today, um, the most important thing is to get to the start line and, and have fun. That's what I do every day. You never know how you're going to feel, so enjoy the moment, and uh, that's how you just keep getting better. Um, I think it's going to be really fun because um, I like to run, and I'm just super excited. Thanks to Ryan Weber for that story. FCTV wants to remind you that television can be as easy as hitting record on your smartphone. We'd like to invite all Falmouth residents and visitors to share their slice of life with us. Email us your photos and videos or upload them to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using the hashtag MyFalmouth or Falmouth in Focus to be featured on the show. Thank you to our most recent contributors. We leave you now with the sights and sounds from the North Falmouth Porch Fest event held earlier this month. Thank you for watching Falmouth in Focus. We'll see you next time.